Let's see what an iterator is going to look like. There is already in our project here oops, a list iterator interface. So basically, um, I took the standard Java library list iterator um, interface, and I only included here the methods that we basically focused on in chapter 15. Next, has next, add, remove, set. That's it. We're going to create a linked list iterator class, just like the Java standard library does. But the linked list iterator class can be in a private inner class inside of the linked list class. Because no other code needs to directly have knowledge of a linked list iterator. Rather, we can just return a reference to a list iterator and they can use all the methods through that. So this is a great example of encapsulation. Okay. So let's go back to our linked list class and scroll down a little bit. We're gonna fill in the, the list iterator method here in a moment. But let's look down here at the inner class that has the documentation and is partially defined that we're gonna actually fill in to make a linked list iterator. The first thing we need to do is actually uncomment this implements list iterator because we truly want to implement the list iterator interface. Once we uncomment it, we're now required to implement next and has next and add, remove, and set, and all those other methods that, that we know. Let's write the code for the three instance variables that make up an iterator. And then we're going to load a, look at a picture to explain why we need them and what they mean. Um, so here's our private instance variables. We're going to have one called position, which we'll refer to a node. We're going to have another one called previous, which also refers to a node. And we're going to have a third one of type boolean called is after next. One really cool thing is as we implement this linked list iterator, you'll have a better appreciation for the behavior of iterators. Like, why do we have to call next before remove? Why can't we call remove twice in a row? Why do we get concurrent modification exceptions? All of those whys will be answered as we implement our own iterator, because we're going to see the challenges of implementing an iterator and why we need those types of restrictions. All right, let's look at the picture, though, to understand these three instance variables. So here's our regular linked list object and three nodes, Diana, Harry, Romeo. And we are going to create a new list iterator object with these three variables, previous, position, and is after next. Is after next is the simplest to explain. Is after next is set to true after the user calls the next method on the iterator. It means the next method was just called, therefore it's safe to call remove as an example. Position and previous um, are a little bit trickier. So when we first create a new list iterator, it's at the very beginning of the list. And so position and previous are both set to null. When we call next on this iterator, position, the value of position will refer to the first node in the list. The way to think about this is position refers to the node we just iterated over. Here's, and this is unfortunate. In chapter 15, we could deal with iterators very conceptually, right? We always said an iterator referred, always pointed between two elements. We'd say, oh, it's like a cursor in a Google box between two letters. And that model works great if we're just using a linked list. It doesn't work so well when we go to implement one because we can't say, oh, the value of position is between two nodes. Like, what does that mean? We have to assign a reference. So position refers to the node we just iterated over. And previous refers to the node 
the second to the last node that we iterated over. The reason why we need to keep track of previous is so that we can implement remove. Right? The, the only reason we have this previous reference is because if we remove this node here, Harry, we need to be able to go back and find this node for Diana to hook it up to this node here, Romeo. Okay? So that's why we keep track of this previous thing. So position refers to the node we just iterated over. Previous refers to the second to last node that we iterated over. That's the meaning of those instance variables. Let's write the constructor to get some stuff initialized. So um, again, just to be explicit, even though the default constructor would be fine, we'll create a linked list iterator And just to be explicit, we're going to set position to null, saying that a new iterator is at the start of the list. Therefore, previous is also null, and is after next is set to false because they haven't called next yet. Let's start easy. Let's start that. Let's skip this next. This is going to be the next method. Let's skip that. Let's do this method in, instead. Test if there is an element after the iterator position. That's the has next method. This one is a little bit easier to implement. So we want to return true if there's a node that we can still iterate over. We have to, there's a couple different cases we have to handle here. If we have a brand new iterator, then position is going to equal null, and we're going to need to look and see is the list empty or not. Because if the list is empty, as next should return false. If the list isn't empty, then there is a node we can iterate over. So let's check that first. If position is null, meaning the iterator is at the beginning of the list, we'll simply return first is not equal to null. So if first is not equal to null, meaning there is a node in the list, we return true. If first equals null, meaning the list is empty, we'll return false. So that's good behavior. Else meaning position is not equal to null, we really, we, that means we just iterated over a node. We need to know, is there another node after that one? And so we'll return position.next is not equal to null. Let's look at the picture to see that. So if position is not null, then we say, oh, look at position.next. So position take references this node. Look at dot next. If this is not null, hey, that means there's another node here we can iterate across. If this is null, we're at the end of the list. Has next needs to return false. So that's what has next looks like. Yes. Sense because that means it's 
what has a value of null, the null not equal to null, that condition value is false. We're going to return false if it's appropriate to give it. So now you play for plug values in for like both and the false. It's like the whole like double, triple, negative trap. It's very confusing. Let's try a few things here with next. So let's go back up to the previous javadoc block and say public object next. So next advances the iterator past the next element and it returns the element that we just iterated over. We do need to check for invalid conditions. Like what if we're at the end of the list, then you can't call next. So we're going to check that by actually calling the has next method. So if not has next, meaning if has next returns false, throw new no such element exception. It is not permitted to call next if we're if the iterator is already at the end of the list. Glancing at our diagram quickly here, let's say this is the current state of our iterator and next is called. We want it to look like this. Okay? So before though we can change position to refer to the node containing Harry, we first need to remember that position currently refers to the node containing Diana. And so we're going to copy the reference stored in position to previous, because previous will then refer to Diana. Once we do that, then we can update position to refer to the node containing Harry. So again, we have to be like careful here with the order in which we do things. So first we're going to say previous equals position. And just to be clear, why are we doing this? We need to remember this for remove. The previous only exists so we can implement remove. So copy the, the link in position in the previous before we change it. Why we're here, let's also set is after next to true because they did just call next. And now we have to update the value of position. We've got a couple situations to handle here. If we have a brand new iterator that's at the beginning of a linked beginning of the list, position is null. And so we simply want to change the value of position to refer to the first node in the list. And we can get that from the first instance variable of linked list. So let's handle that case first. If position equals null, position equals First, done. Otherwise, look at the next case. If position is not null, we want to update position to refer to not the node it's currently referencing, but the next node after that. So we can literally say, we can get that reference by saying position gets us to here dot next gets us a reference to this node here. So that would be position equals position.next. And then we want to return position.data because that's what the user expects is the data stored in the node we just iterated over. Whew. 